this wall is pretty blank and I want to hang a piece of art here. And I'm going to show you some great tools to hang it so that it doesn't mar the wall and also a great tool that I use to hang things when it weighs a little bit more and it hangs it in a sturdy way that won't damage the wall or wear out over time. I'm Jared from DIY with Confidence. Let's get going. Often we hang art or pictures on walls that can scrape or wear on the paint on the wall. And we want to avoid that. The easiest solution to that, especially with something like this that's uneven, so it, it recesses inside here, is to find something to stick on the back that's going to slide without scratching up on the wall. Because this is metal and it will scrape up the paint. I found uh, these little rubber ones aren't always the best, especially against paint, because they can stick to the paint over time, and certainly over time they'll leave a little mark on there. I found this one to be the best. This is from Feltac. It's thicker, you'll notice, and it's also firmer. It doesn't compress as much as some of the other felt ones that are thin and quite compressive. Compressive? Compressible. They compress. <laughs> so I'm going to put one of these on each of the corners and even though this is recessed, this will absolutely stick up above this recessed piece. I would have never slid this thing across my countertop before. It would have scratched it up, it would have ruined my counter. But with these felt packs in place, it slides easily. It doesn't scratch the countertop at all and it doesn't stick on the countertop. Things are perfect. When I went to hang this metal octopus on the wall. Release the Kraken. I knew that its arms and suction cups had some rough edges, and I knew it would just decimate this wall if I put it up against it. So on all the touching points, I put Feltac to make sure that it wouldn't scratch up my wall here. I've not experienced a single scratch on here, even when people bump up against this when they're playing foosball or anything else. It's a great way to protect a wall. There are lots of choices we can make to hang things on the wall. And some work for some applications and some work better for other applications. A nail in a wall is not a bad choice if you're hanging a light piece of art or a light picture frame. However, even those over time have a tendency to kind of wiggle loose. You've seen over a period of time how a nail can begin to do this inside a piece of drywall and it just leaves this exclamation point in there and the art hangs down and it just gets worse and worse, especially on a large or heavy piece of art, that's the wrong choice. Now, when I put this in, it'll hold a tremendous amount of weight and it won't damage any more of the wall than this. In many applications, these are my very favorite wall anchor to use. They're, they're consistent and they function so well. In this one, I don't wanna be left with a hole that big. I'm gonna use what's called a monkey hook. A monkey hook simply goes in, you press it in, and turn it around, and that now is ready to receive the art. And it will hold a tremendous amount of weight. The way it works is it holds like this against the back of it, against the back of the drywall. And when there's pressure put on it, it actually pushes against the drywall right there, so it has several connecting points to hold the weight of whatever we're hanging on it. And then, as we talked about before, I'm left with a minimal hole. Look at that. It's tiny. That's even smaller than a nail. This is a great tool for hanging art of all sorts and pictures on your walls. People often ask the question when they go to hang art on the wall, at what height should I hang? What's the appropriate height to hang a piece of art? Gallery standard and kind of a good standard that falls in the rule of thirds is to hang the art 57 inches, or rather the center of the art, is at 57 inches from the floor. The center of the art will hit right here. The last thing I want to do is make sure that it's centered this way. Man, I pretty much nailed it. Ha <laughs> Nailed it! Literally, I was off by one eighth of an inch. Our eyes are pretty good at perceiving what looks right. So, uh, let's hang it. I just grab this thing in my hand. And 
press it into place. One of the nice things about the monkey hook too is, if I find that it's too snug against the wall, if it pulls this back so this shoots out, all I have to do is pull the monkey hook out a little so that it relieves some of that and pulls it away from the wall. So it's an even gap here and here now. And it automatically hangs evenly. In addition, I don't have to worry about that scraping my wall at all. I can hear it. Not listening. Not listening sliding slowly and smoothly across the wall. There's no scraping or scratching, and it's not doing any damage at all. So there we have it. We know how to protect the wall from further damage and to minimize the impact as we hang art by using felt tack and monkey hooks. Those are the right tools for this kind of application. Again, I'm Jared from DIY with Confidence, where we work together on bolstering your confidence in tackling some of the tasks around your home. If you have found this helpful in any way, um, please give us a like. If you have any comments or questions about when you might use other hanging tools and what applications they might work best, please leave a comment below and I will reply to those. In addition, please subscribe and click that bell so you get notification of the newest videos when they come out. We'll see you next time.